Thanks for checking out this horror debate series video. So you know the drill, it, well, you might know the drill. If you don't know the drill, uh, watch my video first, get my pick for the worst Christmas horror movie, then go over to your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete's channel, which is linked in my description, watch his video of the same name, and then you can come back to my channel, go to the community tab, and vote on who you think had the best justifications for their uh, for their movie, excuse me. Um, and feel free, please comment on my video, comment on his video. You can even comment on one of ours, copy and paste it over to the other one because we don't necessarily read the comments on each other's, so you can duplicate. Uh, but we'd love to hear everyone else's picks for best or uh, best pick for the worst. Christmas horror movie, of which there are enough, in my opinion. But let me go ahead and get into my pick for the worst Christmas horror movie. That has to be the worst installment in a franchise that I otherwise quite like, which is the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise. Now, now that I said that, before I even said which installment it is, anyone familiar with that franchise probably knows which one I'm going to say. Number three, Better Watch Out. I think it's Better Watch Out. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3 is horrendous. Um, this one is the only one that when I went through the entire franchise, I was like, I will never watch that one again. The first one, love it. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. It's actually like a legit good film in a lot of different ways. The second one is a wonderful, so bad it's good film, even though it poaches so much from the first film. The third, this one I'm about to talk about, just no redeeming qualities, basically. Uh, 4 is actually a lot of fun, even though it's not even related to Christmas. It's not even related to Silent Night, Deadly Night. But hey, it has Clint Howard, and it has a lot of like gross, awesome, practical effects. I think Brian Usna was involved with that one. And then Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker, is a lot of fun with Mickey Rooney. And it has this whole like Pinocchio thing going on with it, with some toys that kill people. And it's just a lot of fun. That one's great. But number 3, horrible, horrible, horrible. The music composition is horrendous. It is very simplistic. It is very, like, it's very much of its time for when the film came out, but, like, bad TV movie type music, in my opinion. So, uh, I mean, it's not the reason to hate the movie. It is a reason to hate the movie. It's just one of many things going on that just, you just place it on top of that pile, in my opinion. Uh, yet again, plenty of footage is used from the first film. Now, a lot of people would point and say, well, yeah, but the second one did the same thing where they used a lot of footage from the first film. That was the first of the movies that did it, and I didn't love that aspect of it, but the stuff that was original for the second movie was actually fun in, like, a so bad it's good way. In this third film, it's not even fun. Like, the footage that they added isn't even fun. It's not even a so bad it's good. It's just bad, bad, not worth watching. So... The fact that they did so much poaching <laughs> poaching of footage from the first film in the second one was egregious. A lot of people kind of rolled their eyes at it, me included, when I watched it. So don't do that again. So literally, like, they should have known better than to do that for the third one. So the fact that it didn't work, it wasn't that great for the second film, then they do it again for the third film. It just adds to the this is not acceptable, this is terrible aspect of it. Uh, the characters of Ricky and Laura in this film being psychically linked is really stupid. Not conceptually. There is something they could have done with it. They could have worked the story in a more interesting way or actually used the psychic link between the two of them. They throw it in there as like this, ooh, isn't this different? Isn't this interesting? And yes, potentially, but the fact that they then kind of just forget about it and they don't use it in any meaningful way is ridiculous. It's not, And it's not just that. It's also the fact that there are clear instances within the film where the psychic link should be working for how they set it up. And that would mean that Laura would know certain things about what Ricky is up to, what danger she's in or other people are in. Because they have this, like, open link, supposedly, but it's just, like, very selective when it's actually working and when it's not. And it just doesn't come into play in any meaningful way in the film. So it literally is this kind of, why did you even introduce this if you're not going to have anything to do with it? Like, yeah, you could say maybe it's just, like, a bit of a red herring, but it's, like, the dumbest red herring I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, she should have been using that. Definitely. It should have come into play. 
Uh, next thing, with how cool Bill Mosley looks in this movie, him on a bloody rampage could have been awesome, but it doesn't happen, as most of the kills are off screen, unfortunately. The misuse of Bill Mosley is probably the most egregious thing in this film. He's a good actor. He's been a good actor. Um, not in every single role, but in most roles. He is good at doing that kind of like ridiculous, over-the-top, fun-type acting. And that would have been perfect in a film like this, especially if they just kind of let him do his thing. But he is not himself. Like, he's a mindless drone. Get the pun there. I mean, his look is cool, like with the partially exposed brain, and they could have done something with that, and also just let him actually act, because they just have him kind of like mindlessly walking, but then he kills people, but then you're not even seeing the kills. Like, almost all the kills are off screen, so you're not even getting that satisfaction. This goes back to what I was saying about the score with it, which just makes it seem like it's a very much like a made-for-TV movie type thing, uh, and that's just not a great time. I mean... I mean, maybe, I don't think it was, but maybe it was. Someone can unlight me in the comments, but uh, yeah. But the the misuse of Bill Mosley is the, the worst thing about this film, in my opinion. Because when I initially went into it, I was saying, oh, Bill Mosley's in it, that's fun. And then I saw what his character Ricky looked like, and I was like, oh, that's cool. This is actually a good concept where Ricky's not actually dead. They kind of bring him back to life after he got shot in the second one. And this could go somewhere interesting. Oh, he's getting out. He's going to go on a bloody rampage. I mean, yes, technically he goes on a rampage, but it's not that bloody, especially because it's all off screen and it's not fun. It's like the most boring, bloody rampage I've ever seen. Next thing is the pacing is so slow and you can tell they packed the movie with filler. Now, granted, the second movie, they did the same thing. They put a lot of filler in there, but again, you did it once. Why are you doing it again? And then you can also, well, I will also point to the fourth and fifth installment which aren't like, no one would say they're like masterpieces or great movies or even close to being as good as the, as the first Silent Night, Deadly Night. But one thing's for sure, they don't pack in a ridiculous amount of filler. The third one just feels like they went as far as they could to throw in as much filler as possible. And that's just egregious. Uh, it, it literally feels like the perfect example of a movie that is just padded to, to hit a certain runtime because I think it's only like around an hour and a half anyway, so just saying. And then the last thing I want to say is, oh, I literally put the same thing, probably because it's so important. Bill Mosley is utterly wasted in this bl brainless role. It is just... <sighs> I just have to take a side because it's that bad. But anyway, this movie is just pointless it yes it is actually a part of the series and i guess that's something people can kind of point at and be like well connective tissue wise the first movie the second movie and the third movie are all actually you know all a part of the same story where the fourth and the fifth really aren't but it sucks it's, it's just a terrible movie and it's a waste of anyone's time to watch it although although I will say I'm sure there will be people out there who are a fan of this film, and that's fine. I would really like to hear from some people who really do like the third Silent Night, Deadly Night, and explain to me why. You know, give me a few sentences saying, this is why I like it. Um, defend it to me. Uh, I I'm, all, I'm all for that. But I would say overall, I do need to finish this up by saying just overall, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I haven't seen any of the Silent Night, Deadly Nights, or I've only seen the first one or one of them or a few of them, Definitely watch them all. I mean, I would say go ahead and watch the third one anyway, just to kind of find out how you personally feel about it, because, you know, this is just my opinion. But I would say the other ones are 100% worth watching. Like I said, the first one is, like, legitimately a good Christmas horror film. The second one is a, a fun, like, so bad it's good that you can laugh at. Probably really good to watch with friends. And then the fourth one is like over the top ridiculous with cool practical effects and gory and weird and has Clint Howard. And then the fifth one is just like fun, wacky, zany and going back to what the second one kind of did, which is like a fun so bad it's good. Plus killer toys. Like who doesn't like killer toys? Uh, it is a franchise that I've actually become very fond of. I think it was... I don't think it I don't think it was last December. I think it was December before that, 2021's December, where I watched through all the movies and reviewed them all. So 
If you want full reviews, they're on my channel. I'm just going to plug myself there. But thank you so much for checking this out. Again, go over to your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete's channel. Watch his video of the same name. Then you can come back here and vote on the community tab. Do us both a favor. Subscribe to both our channels. That would be wonderful. We greatly appreciate that. And then uh, hit the notification bell button. That way you'll know when we're putting up new videos. And hit those likes for these videos to kind of help us out with the YouTube algorithm. We do appreciate all that stuff. But regardless, thank you for being a part of this, uh, at least just watching the videos, even if you don't comment. Uh, and thank you for watching this video in particular. And until next time, keep it brutal.